is very high in the polls, but doesn't have a clue about how to govern, a person who has been filled with scandals and who could not lead. And of course, I'm talking about Hillary Clinton. <laughs> A little misdirection there from Governor Mike Huckabee, former governor of Arkansas, presidential candidate, Thursday night's debate. Governor Huckabee, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. So you had a nice turn at the end of that debate on, on Thursday night. But S Donald Trump has not backed down at all since that debate. What do you say about him now? Look, he is uh, connecting with a lot of people, but uh, I think the rest of us are, are doing what we're supposed to do, and that's focus on getting a message out, which is sometimes hard to do because uh, all the air in the balloon is going to Donald Trump right now. But that's okay because this is a long process, and it's like a baseball season, George. Uh, there are some early games, doesn't necessarily determine who's going to be in the World Series. And when we go to a debate, Quite frankly, and I heard your panel say that uh, there, there wasn't a lot of substance. Well, it's hard to do a lot of substance when you're given either one minute or 30 seconds. So I would love to have an opportunity to stand on that stage and go into the details of why I defend things like Social Security and Medicare, why I believe in the fair tax. But it's sometimes hard because all people want to ask me is, what do I think about Donald Trump? But at, but at what point does that become a real problem for your party? And, and do you have to stand up and do the other candidates have to stand up and say, you know, enough is enough. He's not he's not going to be our nominee. We will not support him if he is. I don't think that's our role. I think our role is to run for president. It's the voters role to determine who they are going to connect to. My job is to connect to the voters, not to disconnect them from Donald Trump. Uh, he's going to give his message, I'm going to give mine, and in time we'll see which one really uh, speaks to the heart, the soul, and to the uh, sense of option and opportunity for the American people. I think in the long term, when I get a chance to really talk to people about how do we bring wages up for people at the bottom, 90% of the people in this country's wages have been flat for 40 years, uh, there's some real hurt out there in America, and people right now are hurting so much. They're just angry, and Donald Trump is touching that. But now people are going to start, I think, over the coming months, say, but how do we fix this? How do we make it better? And some of us actually have thought through this quite a bit. And we've been through this process, not just of running for president, but of governing. And we understand something about what it takes to move the needle to a new direction. I, and that's when the race is going to get even more serious. I actually agree with you. I think there was a fair amount of substance in the debate uh, on Thursday night. It could have been uh, even more if, if you don't have the constraints that are always there in a debate. And one of the issues that all the candidates agreed on was defunding Planned Parenthood. But you went even further on Thursday, and I want to show that right here. I think it's time to do something even more bold. I think the next president ought to invoke the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments to the Constitution now that we clearly know that that baby inside the mother's womb is a person at the moment of conception. The question is, what does that mean, invoking the Fifth and the Fourteenth Amendment? And there was a recent headline when you spoke back in Kansas, the Topeka Capital Journal, where the headline said, Mike Huckabee, Republican presidential candidate, won't rule out employing U.S. troops, FBI, to stop abortion. Is that the fallout from invoking the Fifth and the Fourteenth Amendments? Well, that whole idea about the troops and the FBI didn't come from me. That, those weren't my words. That was uh, something that the Rolling Stone a reporter said. And we know how reliable Rolling Stone is as a journalistic tool. Uh, so what I'm saying is, is that the real issue here is not whether we're going to give money to Planned Parenthood. Yes, that's important. But the bigger issue is, is that unborn child a human being? Because if it is, then the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment apply because so we're dealing with personhood. So what does that mean, though, in practice? Well, it means that you guarantee due process under the Fifth Amendment before you deprive someone of their life and liberty. It means under the 14th Amendment there's equal protection under the law. Exactly how that plays out is uh, one of the ways we, we discover. What does it take for Americans to finally wake up to the fact that we are violating the constitutional rights of human beings? And uh, in the past, presidents have employed many different ways so, to make would, sure would that, that mean calling in law basic enforcement human rights to, are, are protected. Would it mean calling in law enforcement to prevent abortions? I, I think the bigger question is let's, let's establish the personhood of the individual. Uh, let's make sure that America comes to grips with that. George, we can't keep defending the, the loss of 60 million human lives uh, over the past 42 years. We're, we're not acting like a civilized people in, in the way in which abortion and its unrestricted fashion has continued. 
Uh, and, and even the politicians who pretend that they're not really for it, they're personally against it, uh, they'll say things like, let's keep it safe, legal, and rare. It's not safe. Uh, I don't think it's legal. I think it violates the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment uh, rights of an unborn person. And it certainly isn't rare. It happens 4,000 times a day. That's hardly rare. Governor Huckabee, thanks for joining us again this morning. Hope you'll come back soon.